Like, can disappointment take our joy? And no, because if our plans don't work out, we know that God's will. I'm sorry if the lighting is always so out of whack. It's because my window is right here. And so like, if it's bright, it looks like my eyebrows are gray. All right, anyway, it doesn't really matter because that's not the point. It's not about how I look. It's not about what I do. It's not about what I'm wearing, anything like that because today's message is really good. And I say this in all my videos, but the only reason that you see these videos is honestly because I feel like the Holy Spirit is in me and like he gives me not a word, but like something to go off and then I do some research and then I'm just like, things are just coming up and it's it's incredible kind of how, how it um, plays out. But anyway, I'm already talking a lot. So if you guys saw my latest video about comparison, I felt very uneasy after filming that just because I felt like I did not complete the circle. Like I felt like there was a lot of stuff that was unsaid. There was a lot of stuff that I did not touch on that I wish I had touched on. And that's kind of the reason why I wanted to film this video in particular. The point in my last video was if you struggle with comparison or you do it often, blah, 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 like it is such a toxic cycle. And I've been there, I've done it. I've compared my life to absolutely everyone, absolutely everything. Anything that I had was not enough. I wasn't enough. My voice wasn't enough. My personality, my looks, my body, all that stuff. And in that video, I touched on the if only mentality. If only I had this car, I'd be happy. If only I had this job, I'd be happy. If only I, I had this marriage, I would be happy. And when I think of the word happiness, when I think of that word in particular, I think of contentment. And in that video, I didn't really answer, well, why is it that we're not content? Why is it that if we don't have this car, this job, or this marriage, or this financial status, or this house, like we would not be content? I just want to bring some light to this because in Philippians 4.11 through 4.13, the infamous verse is in 4.13 and it talks about, I can do all things in Christ who strengthens me. And a lot of people take that verse out of context. Like when I first read it, I was like, you know what? I can do all things in Christ who strengthens me, meaning I can go get that job if I wanted to. I can go pick up that heavy rock if I wanted to. I can go squat this amount of pounds because Christ is in me and he is the one who strengthens me. I can go win that championship because Christ is with me. Like people use this verse um, very loosely and I think it's important to understand the context behind it. And so that's kind of what I'm going to get into today because when you think of comparison, that is because we are wanting something else because what we have is not making us content. And so that's why I'm talking about contentment because the contentment that we so eagerly need or eagerly want should be in Christ alone. So I'm going to share with you guys the two verses before 413. And I believe this, this will clear it up. And this will also, um, I think for some people really be a conviction because it for sure was for me. Um, so yeah, let me just get into Philippians 4.13 if you guys want to open up your Bibles with me. <laughs> so the verse that I touched upon in my last video comparison was Philippians 4.6 and that reads, do not be anxious about anything, but in every situation by prayer and petition with thanksgiving, present your requests to God and the peace of God, which transcends all understanding will guard your heart and your minds in Christ Jesus. Hold on to that verse because in it, it talks about do not be anxious in anything but everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving. When you have a heart of gratitude, it's hard to have a heart of gratitude and envy at the same time because if you are grateful for the things that you do have, it's hard to think about the things that you don't have. And going along with what I'm saying right now, if you go down a little bit further in chapter four, verse 11, it says, I am not saying this because I'm in need for I have learned to be content, whatever the circumstances. I know what it is to be in need and I know what it is to have plenty. I have learned the secret of being content in any and every situation, whether well-fed or hungry, whether living in plenty or in want. I can do all this through him who gives me strength. You guys, so if we go back to that verse, 
Paul is saying, whether well-fed or hungry, whether in abundance or in need, I found the secret, something that is not known or seen by other people. And I think when he says secret, I think like it's not based on his understanding. It's not based on what he thinks. It's not based on his opinion. It is based on he found the secret to contentment. If anything, he is the one that has been in Hungary. He's also been the one that had plenty. He's also had abundance. He's also been in well, well in need. And this is coming from a guy that is literally in prison at this point, And he is living in a prison cell, writing this to the Philippians. And he is basically saying like, hey, I found the secret in contentment. This is coming from a guy that literally like his mansion or his house is prison walls. His wife His wife is a prison guard, yet he has found the secret to contentment. And that is in Christ alone because Christ is where the joy is. When you have God, you have eternal life. When you have God, you have forgiveness of your sins. When you have God, you don't need anything else is essentially what he's saying. And it just, it shows like the humility of of Paul because you don't need anything any of this stuff. All you need is Christ. And so when we try to compare our life to other people, like remember Paul. Paul focused on a different list, not a list of having a really good house, having a really good job, having plenty of kids, having a happy marriage, having this, having this nice car, having uh, uh, three wardrobes of clothes. He didn't focus on that list. He focused on the list of God, of God's promises, of eternal life, of forgiveness, of grace, of mercy. If he had Christ, he had enough. So essentially, like what you have in Christ is far greater than anything that you do not have in life. And it has been a very heavy conviction in my personal life because it's easy for me to come on here and be like, oh, don't compare your life to others. Well, I'm sitting here in a home with a roof over my head with food on the table. And it's like other people in different countries don't even have that. Like it's easy for me to say. And I feel so convicted. And it's like if everything were to be taken away, would I still be, still be content? Would I still be happy? Okay, I'm going to briefly touch on this really quickly, and that is rejection. Um, The only reason why I bring that up is because personally for me, the reason why I compared myself to so many people or to other people's situations, circumstances was because I myself have experienced rejection, whether that's in a job, whether that's in a friendship, relationship, um, all this kind of stuff. And rejection, there's a Bible story that just comes to mind. And that is the one of David. When Samuel goes out to find a king among Jesse's sons, we recall in the story, like, All of Jesse's sons lined up, basically, um, and the only one son that was not there was David because he was overlooked, he was unseen, he... They didn't think that he was meant for that part. And so they didn't even actually tell him to join his other sons while Samuel was coming to anoint the king, right? And so David experienced rejection from his own brothers. Same with like Joseph experienced rejection from his brothers. Um, But in that moment of seeming very insignificant, like David, you guys, he was the one that was being prepared to eventually take on Goliath. And that just goes to show you, like if you were experiencing rejection, if you were experiencing somewhere, someplace, maybe your job is, maybe your friendship, maybe your your spouse, maybe your boyfriend, maybe whatever at the time, that could play a huge part as to why you feel the need to compare yourself. And I think just one thing to just keep remembering is you should feel sufficient in God alone, in Christ alone, because he is the ultimate source of joy and contentment and things like that. And so I hope today's video was a little bit encouraging. Um, yeah, I just, I know that I find myself a lot. I, I know that I find myself comparing myself, comparing my situation to other people. Um, obviously, it's not as much now just because like I know who I am and I am confident in God's love and I, I'd rather be seeking him as opposed to seeking other things, as opposed to feeling content in other people or their approval of me or the amount of money that I have, the the materialistic things. 
So yeah, I hope this encouraged you. I hope this helped you and I hope you guys subscribe. I hope you guys, I hope you guys like, um, this content for today and yeah, by all means, please comment down below. Um, I love reading all of your guys' comments. I love commenting back and liking them and all that stuff. So it's, it's really exciting, but yeah, I hope you guys have a great day and I will see you guys in my next video. Bye.